Endowed with creativity and charisma, and profoundly connected to his cultural heritage, Lloyd Keevan New gave this world a fresh perspective on indigenous art. The power of education and the range of potential each of us possesses. His special gift to Scottsdale was its reputation as an eclectic center for arts, crafts, and fashion. And although he moved on to establish national Indian arts organizations and mentor hundreds of promising Native American artists, he left an indelible mark on Scottsdale through his 20 stellar years here. The worlds of contemporary art, fashion, and education lost a remarkable creative spirit and friend when he died in 2002. Lloyd Henry New was born in rural Oklahoma in 1916 to a Scot-Irish father and a full-blooded Cherokee mother. The youngest of 10 children, Lloyd absorbed the legends and lore his mother shared about their culture. He also demonstrated artistic talent at a very young age. After graduating from high school, he briefly attended college in Oklahoma before hopping a freight train to attend the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. He landed a spot at the prestigious School of the Art Institute of Chicago, from which he graduated in 1938. Although offered a more lucrative position in Maryland, he accepted a $60 a month job with the Bureau of Indian Affairs as an apprentice art teacher at the Phoenix Indian Boarding School. During his four years at the Phoenix Indian School, he made lifetime friends and began his lifelong quest to encourage Native Americans to express themselves through both traditional and contemporary art. He took student apprentices Charles Laloma and Andy Sinhajini to San Francisco to create murals for the Golden Gate International Exhibition. Lloyd also befriended Scottsdale artists Lou and Matilde Davis, Phil Curtis, and architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Shortly after the U.S. entered World War II, New enlisted in the Navy. He served as an artist with a 5th Special CB Battalion in the Aleutian Islands then received a commission and served as a boat wave commander in the amphibious corps in the Pacific Theater. After the war, he returned to his wife, Betty, in Phoenix, not sure what he was going to do next. Restless, he drove out to the tiny village of Scottsdale, where he unexpectedly encountered his friends, Lou and Matilde Davis, outside the abandoned general store at Main Street and Brown Avenue. The Davises told him They'd been waiting for him to come home so that he could join them and woodcarver Sandy Sanderson in the artist's studio that businessman Tom Darlington was creating out of the old store. The three were soon joined by silversmith Wes Segner. In the winter of 1945-46, the Arizona Craftsman Center opened to a post-war crowd hungry for art, crafts, and perhaps a bit of unrationed glamour. Lloyd found his niche creating leather handbags in the contemporized style of the Navajo medicine man's pouch. His first customer just happened to be Mrs. Fowler McCormick, who then became his friend and patron. In 1947, former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt visited the Arizona Craftsman Center and wrote glowing praise for Lloyd Kiva, now his professional name, in her nationally syndicated My Day column. That didn't take long for his stunning bags to reach au couture status among the guests of Elizabeth Arden's main chance spa in Paradise Valley, discerning shoppers at Bergdorf Goodman in New York, or among the well-heeled winter visitors to Scottsdale's growing number of guest ranches and resorts. To meet demand, Lloyd hired more Native American apprentices and expanded his line to include leather jackets and belts. When the original Arizona Craftsman Center burned to the ground in May 1950, Kiva and his fellow craftsmen moved to the north edge of town and created an area they called Fifth Avenue. Within a short time, it gained a reputation as a fashion center nearly as famous as its New York counterpart. Lloyd Kiva was responsible for much of its cachet. As talented in marketing as he was in creating Indian-inspired fashions, he orchestrated fashion shows and designed frocks for Miss Arizona to wear in the 1957 Miss America pageant for waitresses at the Camelback Inn and for female members of the Phoenix Symphony Orchestra. He also began creating resort wear from silk screen fabrics decorated with contemporized Indian designs. He also built the Kiva Craft Center on Fifth Avenue, bringing additional artisans and fashion designers to Scottsdale. During the 1950s and the 1960s, hardly a week went by that Lloyd Kiva and his fashions weren't featured in the pages of Life, the Saturday Evening Post, the Arizona Republic, the Scottsdale Progress, National Geographic, or Harper's Bazaar. The more attention his work received, 
the more the name Scottsdale appeared as the place to visit and shop. Lloyd New got involved in all aspects of building the community. He was a founder of the Scottsdale Chamber of Commerce in 1947 and served on its board. He served on the board of the Arizona Fashion Council and was a founder of the Arizona Designer Craftsman, the local chapter of the American Crafts Council. He was a charter trustee of the Heard Museum and served as a trustee throughout the rest of his life. For several years, he helped organize and serve as a judge of the Indian Arts and Craft exhibit at the Arizona State Fair. Although he had become Scottsdale's unofficial ambassador of style, to all who would listen, Kiva articulated a different dream. He wanted to create a school for Native American artists where they would be encouraged to express themselves and pursue their creativity while giving age-old traditions a contemporary look and feel. In the early 1960s, Lloyd New's goal became a reality when he was asked by the Bureau of Indian Affairs to co-found the Institute of American Indian Art in Santa Fe. For several years, he commuted back and forth between Santa Fe and Scottsdale, but eventually turned the Kiva Craft Center shop over to his apprentices and associates to devote his time to developing the school and mentoring its students. He served as president of IAIA through 1978 and as its president emeritus through the time of his death. New was constantly sought for his insight, wisdom, breadth of experience, and political acumen in fields of education and art. The U.S. Secretary of the Interior appointed New to the Indian Arts and Crafts Board, where he served as chair for many years. In this role, he helped rewrite legislation and guidance on indigenous art. He was one of the elders who served as consultants to the Smithsonian during design of the National Museum of Indian Art, which opened in September 2004 in Washington, D.C. He served as guest curator at significant national and international art exhibitions and wrote for a variety of art education and mainstream publications. His national awards and recognition are both impressive and extensive, but beyond the plaques and the testimonial dinners, he was most proud of being called the godfather of contemporary Indian art. Throughout his life, his students, friends, and his family were his great joy. He was close to his children, Jeff and Nancy, who were born in Scottsdale. He frequently visited his friends, Phil Curtis, Fritz Shoulder, and others in Scottsdale. And he was thrilled to share the last seven years of his life with his wife and soulmate, Aisha, who continues to champion his beloved Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe. Artist, fashion designer, educator, mentor, writer, political advocate, visionary, and friend. Lloyd Keevan New is best remembered in Scottsdale for giving us a very special sense of style that endures today.